Linux Mint has long been the go-to distro if you're looking for a familiar and stable experience. The developers regularly pick just the right selection of features to continually improve the user experience you're already used to without creating a new learning curve or causing stability issues. And this continues with Linux Mint 21.2, which has just seen its beta release, so the official version should be coming soon. It's a surprisingly large release with lots of refinements across the board that might just tick the last few boxes needed to consider it a perfect distro. But before I get ahead of myself there, this release also raises some questions about the future of Linux Mint that I'll speak on shortly. But let's start with the host of improvements. One of the most annoying tasks in recent years has been customizing the theme and accent colors of the system. Mint has accumulated so many themes and color variants that the drop-down menus for each element are a giant maze to find which item you want. You can still access all of this if you really want to mix and match everything to your heart's content, but Mint 21.2 has implemented a far better solution for picking your theme and accent color. Now you can simply pick your desired style, which is essentially the theme, whether you want light, dark, or a mixed mode, and you have a plethora of accent colors to pick from, which automatically applies to all aspects of the system, such as the icons, highlights, and more. There are also a couple dual-tone color options here that I think really look good. Now, as well, the folder icons are entirely the chosen accent color, instead of just having that little colored stripe from Mint 21.1, and other elements of the system, such as tooltips when you hover over buttons, and system notifications now incorporate the accent color as well. And all of this theming works consistently across all application types and parts of the system. Whether it's a GTK or Qt app, native package or flat pack, thanks to the inclusion of XDG portal, the chosen theme and color is applied everywhere, which is more than can be said on many other distros. These changes make it way easier to customize the theme of the system to your liking, and other small improvements to things like the window title bars, uh, shadows around the windows, and a consistent use of symbolic icons make the overall aesthetic way cleaner and more consistent than ever before. Mint 21.2 also, finally, includes native support for touchpad gestures. These are currently disabled by default, but you can enable them and customize exactly what action each gesture does. And while there are a lot of choices here, if you're not satisfied with any of the predefined ones, you can specify for a gesture to run any custom command of your choosing, say to launch a specific application, or, I don't know, download the latest updates to a Git repo, because that's obviously what you want to do every time you pinch with four fingers. The only real problem that I have with the gesture implementation here is that they aren't one-to-one -one gestures, meaning that they don't smoothly happen as you move your fingers, but rather wait until the gesture is recognized or completed, and then the animation just happens all at once. Sure, it's a nitpick, but they don't really feel as smooth as they could. And I don't want to hear anything about not being able to implement one-to-one -one gestures on X11. Elementary OS managed to do it, but if it's really too hard for them to do, then Mint really needs to get a move on migrating towards Wayland. Now, many of the inbuilt apps have seen significant improvements in 21.2. For starters, the software manager has a bit of a redesign that cleans up the look quite a bit. Now, the toolbars have been cleaned up into a nicely unified header bar at the top. The main page has also been revamped to spotlight featured apps above of the app categories, and to also include flat packs in said list of apps. It's a nice interface improvement that brings it up to par with other software managers, but I am still annoyed that search results show duplicate items for standard packages and flat packs. Considering that the software manager supports having a source drop-down list to choose which version you want, there seems to be no need to have redundant search results anymore. So it's just confusing for users to see multiple results for the exact same app, and it's something that I think needs to go. But back on a positive note, another app with an insane number of improvements is Pix, the image viewer and organizer. 
Many of its improvements come from being based on a newer version of GThumb, but regardless, the improvements are noteworthy. It also inherits a cleaner header bar design for the top toolbar, along with numerous new photo editing tools and effects. There are dozens of other improvements as well, such as expanded support of additional image formats, support for larger thumbnail sizes up to 1024 pixels, support for image color profiles and a new color picker, multi-folder searching, and customizable keyboard shortcuts, just to name a few. With all of these enhancements, Pix has probably become one of the best photo managers both included on Linux and also compared to similar utilities built into other operating systems. Everyone's always so envious of the built-in photo editing tools in macOS, but I think that what's included here in Pix, and GThumb for that matter, really give it a run for its money. Like, this is seriously impressive as a built-in utility, and considering you can get it on any other distro. Also, Warpinator, Mint's cross-device file sharing app, has seen some security improvements thanks to work done by the SUSE security team. It now ensures that files can't be saved outside of the specified directory, and while Warpinator will continue to show any devices on the network that have the app open, a common group code will be required to be set between devices to see each other if the app is left running indefinitely in the background. The rest of the system also sees some general improvements, including system-wide support for AGIF and AVIF files, the ability to open Adobe Illustrator documents in XReader, the document reader, an upgraded Blueman app for managing Bluetooth devices, and improvements to NVIDIA offloading. As well, the login screen, called Slick Greeter, now supports tap to click on touchpads, multiple keyboard layouts, and the ability to configure the layout of the on-screen keyboard. While the Cinnamon desktop remains the flagship and ideal Linux Mint experience for most users, the Mate and XFCE versions get most of these improvements as well, other than the new Appearance Styles page. But all of these nice new theme options are still there along with the rest of the system and app improvements. The XFCE edition moves to XFCE 4.18, which brings massive improvements to the file manager, making Thunar actually really powerful, as well as some simpler theme integration for the system. The XFCE edition remains a great option for anyone wanting or needing a lighter weight version of Mint. The same might not be true for the Mate edition though. While it does also benefit from many of the same improvements as the other editions, the Mate desktop itself hasn't been updated since the last release, and it's not really any lighter on resources than XFCE. So unless you just really love the Mate or classic GNOME desktop, I'm not sure there's much point in getting the Mate edition. But hey, it is personal preference. And that brings me right to the single problem with Mint 21.2. It continues to be a bit stuck in the past. Now, I don't mean that because it ships with packages from Ubuntu 22.04, because Flatpak support ensures that you have recent app versions, or the fact that it still uses the 5.15 LTS kernel, missing out on the newest hardware support, because that's never been exactly what Linux Mint is about, and you can get the 5.19 kernel. Rather, it's that there is still no indication that the Cinnamon desktop is preparing to migrate to Wayland. Yes, Mint 21.2 does support Wayland sessions at a system level, but none of the included desktops support it. It's only there if you happen to install another desktop like GNOME or KDE that can use it. It seems like it would be beneficial to work on Wayland support in Cinnamon, because enabling features like proper one-to-one -one touchpad gestures or improved display scaling would be so much easier on Wayland. And X11 isn't going to be supported forever. Sure, it might continue to run the desktop perfectly fine for years to come, but the various frameworks that Cinnamon relies on, like Mutter and GTK, may not continue to utilize it. Hopefully, the next big release of Mint next year will bring it into the modern age of Linux technologies. But putting that aside, even as it stands now, Mint 21.2 has a superb collection of improvements that take the already solid experience to another level that is very close to perfection. If you've liked using Linux Mint in the past, then you'll absolutely love the improvements here. 
And even if it hasn't been quite your cup of tea, perhaps some of the aesthetic improvements will convince you otherwise. Let me know your thoughts on this upcoming release in the comments. And I would appreciate you pressing those usual like, subscribe, and notification buttons if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Planet Linux. Wonder what it tastes like if Mint and Pop OS had a baby. Oh, okay, that that sounded way less weird in my head.